How is multiple sclerosis diagnosed? The diagnosis of multiple sclerosis can be tricky in some people. The average length of time from when a person has their first symptoms to when the diagnosis is made can be two to three years on average in the United States. That's not a good thing. Uh, the sooner we can get people on therapy for multiple sclerosis, the better they're likely to do in the long run. So there really is a push to try to identify people with MS as quickly but as accurately as, as possible. The gold standard for diagnosing multiple sclerosis really has been the definition of dissemination in time and space of focal neurological events. By that I mean that the person would have signs and symptoms of something going on in the brain or spinal cord, um, maybe relative to their eye one time and that uh, comes on, maybe resolves, and then maybe their leg uh, the next time so that it's spread out uh, in both the, its location in the central nervous system and it's spread out in, in uh, time. There should not be a better explanation for why these, these things are occurring. That is part of the, the, uh, the key to diagnosing MS. We don't want to, to use that label if there's a more reasonable explanation. So in theory, you could diagnose multiple sclerosis without MRI or without spinal fluid exam or other lab testing, but we certainly aren't usually comfortable doing that. The technology has helped quite a bit in identifying people who have MS. It also has helped in maybe weeding out people who don't have MS, who maybe have some other health condition that would account for their symptoms. A few years ago, the diagnostic criteria were revised uh, into something called the McDonald criteria. What the McDonald criteria really allowed us to do is potentially make the diagnosis of MS in the person who had only had one clinical event. So if someone came in and had, uh, again, visual changes um, in a way that would be suspicious for MS, Prior to the McDonald criteria, we would wait until they had their second event to make the diagnosis of MS. Now with the McDonald criteria, we can do MRI scans three months out from the, their original scan or their original symptoms. And if they have new areas of inflammation or new changes consistent with MS, that can be used to, uh, as evidence of that second event rather than waiting for the person to have another uh, physical symptom. That's very important because we know from studies in people on no therapy for multiple sclerosis that for every one relapse they have, there can be five to ten lesions that have popped up in the brain and have not given any obvious uh, symptoms. There are other tests that we sometimes do to help in uh, making the diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. Spinal fluid evaluation is sometimes done. Uh, it's also called lumbar puncture or spinal tap. Sometimes we do that when the situation is not entirely clear uh, as to whether a person has MS. Sometimes we do it to rule out other conditions. We sometimes do electrical tests called evoked potentials. These can be done to look at visual or auditory pathways or to look at sensory pathways coming from the arms or legs. And usually the way that we use these is to try to identify again another area of damage uh, to give us that dissemination in space uh, criteria for multiple sclerosis.